Clarity is power. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's episode of 7 Good Minutes, we talk about three great tips for better mental clarity. Enjoy. So you know what's pretty crazy? The human brain is pretty crazy. It's such a fascinating machine and we barely have scratched the surface of what it's capable of. But for that very reason, we don't really understand it fully. Like why is it that some days it seems like our friend, like we're full of confidence, full of energy, witty, sharp as a tack, while other days it feels like our enemy. You know, feels you feel lethargic, you feel sluggish, feels like someone just poured over a vat of molasses over your brain and it's just slowing down all the gears of your mind. And on these days, it seems to completely sabotage our ability to focus or remember in the short term or even the long term. Basically, it just screws over our brain completely. This dilapidated state is often referred to as brain fog and according to the internet, is characterized primarily by a lack of mental clarity, inability to focus, and a decreased function of working memory. But why does this happen, and how can we prevent it? Over the past couple of years, I've been trying to answer this question. Because brain fog sucks, especially if you have an important meeting or a date, or you're interacting with people a lot of the time, or you have to solve a problem. A lot of days, you can't afford to be in this state of brain fog. You're presenting to the world like the worst possible version of yourself, and it's annoying. So in this video, we're gonna go over three powerful strategies to clear up that mental bleh. We're going to go over three reasons why you probably have brain fog and how to fix them. How to fix them. How to fix them. Got to catch them all. Factor number one is overstimulation. I think it was Tim Ferriss who said that we live in a digital environment where attention is currency. All these different companies, all these different websites, these advertisers, they want your attention because they can monetize it. Whenever you click on something, somebody gets paid. Whenever you watch something, somebody gets paid. Moral of the story is everybody wants your attention. What this means for you is if you spend a lot of time on the internet and around screens, inevitably your attention is gonna be completely dispersed in a thousand different directions. And if you spend a long enough time doing this, you start to get used to having your attention fragmented. YouTube is a perfect example of this. Clickbait on YouTube is so powerful because of something called supernormal stimulus. Improvement Pill has a YouTube channel called The Dopamine Fast, or it's about a dopamine fast. It talks about a having a single day where you t- drink nothing but water and you, and you uh, yeah, you don't, you don't intake any information. You can only output information. This is obviously a very extreme example. And if you don't live like a Shaolin monk, you probably have errands to run on a Saturday. So you probably don't have time to do nothing all day like a scheduled day where you do nothing. But it is a really cool concept and I still think you should check the video out. But what I think is a lot more practical of a solution is to practice meditation. I know I talk about meditation all the time, but it's so powerful in this day and age because people can't sit still with themselves for more than five minutes. And it trains you to collect this scattered focus of yours and redirect it into doing something super boring. What's more boring than sitting there by yourself doing nothing? And after you develop this muscle of being able to do that, you can focus on conversations better. You'll be able to focus on a math problem. So reducing social media use, bad screen time, and learning how to meditate or just focusing on doing something slower paced for an extended period of time, you will train yourself to stop being so scattered, so foggy, so in your head, and really focus in on what's in front of you, and it'll help with your brain fog a lot. So one of the best ways to clear up that brain fog and become more present and focused and dialed in is to prevent being scattered in the first place. Say you have to write a paper and the deadline is one month from now. You have some clear days where you could work on your paper, but you say to yourself, oh, it's due a month from now. I can definitely do it three weeks before. And then three weeks before it comes and you're like, I can do it two weeks before. Every time you do that, you're not forgetting about this deadline. You're just giving it to your subconscious to worry about. And the more things your subconscious has to worry about, the more scattered you become. Just because it isn't on the front lines of your brain and the thing that you're actively thinking about all the time, you're still thinking about it. Subconsciously, you're worrying about it. And the more things you give to your subconscious to worry about, the worse your brain fog gets. So just get it done so you don't have to worry about it anymore. And you can just focus on the task at hand. So tip number one is don't procrastinate. And tip number two is to write 
down your goals, objectives, and tasks. Say you meet a friend on the street that you haven't seen for a while, and you catch up, you have a great conversation, and they say, hey, let's meet up Tuesday afternoon and let's grab lunch. And you say, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I'll see you then, and then you depart. You depart, I said that archaically. You depart from each other. Write that down. Schedule it in, set a reminder on your phone so that you can forget about it. Don't give it to your subconscious to have to worry about. You're just gonna be thinking, Tuesday afternoon, I've got a dinner, dinner date. Tuesday afternoon, I've got a lunch date with Kevin. And that makes your attention to everything else for that entire week reduced because you're just gonna be thinking about this lunch date with Kevin that you have to remember. This is dumb. Every time that you have a task to do, every time you have something scheduled, you agree to something, write it down, set a reminder on your phone so that you can forget about it. It'll free up mental RAM and it'll bring your, your subconscious soup you have going on. It'll reduce the ingredients of that soup, giving you a nice clear broth that will help your brain operate better. That does it for today's episode of 7 Good Minutes. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on the platform you're listening on. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.